morning and welcome uh, to the George Mason Show. I have a great show for you tonight. It's no question about that. I'm blessed and honored to have a Sangha of the Valley. Huh? He's a master drummer, Trinidadian drummer. He's a student of the, the great and late Baba Tunde Ola Tunje. And um, we're going to, uh, it's going to be like an educational as well as an entertaining uh, evening tonight. And this man is going to take us all through the continent of Africa and give us a, a, a tutorial of what the drums is, the history of the drums. Uh, he's uh, very uh, skilled as far as. Uh, the drum he was with uh obatun hey karen uh let's have a look karen karen is massive she's a big supporter of uh, of the show she's out in wisconsin and uh thank you for tuning in karen you're going to enjoy this show tonight and um the brother as i said he was uh a, a member of uh ola tunje's drums of passion and uh and Sangha of the Valley. Uh, it won a Grammy Award for the best world music album of 1991. And this was the first year that this award was given out. Okay? That's a hell of a thing. And also, Sangha is a Trini and Daddy uh, drummer, as I said before, a student uh, and a member of the Village of uh, Drums of Freedom. He's also a part of Yaffa Cultural Arts Inc., as you see, I have it displayed there. And um, I'm going to get some other stuff up there, give you his props. He met Oda Tunji and became a uh, Baba student and uh, one of his lead at uh, Jim Bay players. He spent 25 years with Ola Tunji with his drums of passion. He worked with such artists as Carlos Santana, Nina Simone, you heard me, uh, the Grateful Dead, the Neville Brothers, and uh, the list goes on and on. He is, uh, as I said, a master drum book. And uh, I have him here tonight. And before we get into that, I'm not even going to do any news or anything. I'm not, as I normally would do, a play around, do a joke here and there, you know. <laughs> uh, but we uh, we won't we won't do that tonight. Uh, out of respect for this man and for the the love of the craft, and uh, he's a uh, he's a beautiful spirit. We got good vibes all throughout, and. Uh, I'm expecting to have uh, a nice audience, a, a good house, and uh, people will start to come in, and it's a beautiful thing. And I want to, uh, before I uh, uh, bring out this man, I want to give you an introduction into what he's about. And uh, okay, Karen says you're welcome. God bless you, lady. Yes, and I uh, want to uh, get this. To, give you uh, a peek, as I said, an introduction, tutorial, if you will, into what uh, he is all about. Okay. Bear with me for one second here as I get everything there. As I said, he was a member of the Drums of Passion. Here we go. This is the drum, drum talk, talking that drum talk. These drums came from Africa, across the waters to America. These drums came with healing vibration. So right now we need a healing vibration. So I come to you with the drum. My name is Sangha of the Valley. I am with Yafa Cultural Arts, Inc. I am here with my drum here.
man. And I have the man here, huh? In the studio, in his or in the house. Here he is himself in person. Blessed my stage, my studio, Sons of the Valley. Peace, bro. That was Peace beautiful. Love, brother. Peace and love. Man, you huh? had me dancing to my own music. Your own music. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, man. Huh? You know well, it's good. Pick, like, you pick a good one, man. God bless you. Thank you. Well, listen, well, can't go wrong. Can't go yeah. wrong with you. Whatever I pick. You know, like I said, the ones that I, I wanted to also show and display, um, we already discussed that, you know, uh, yes, what that, that situation was. Uh, but the music is there. The spirit is there. The vibe is there. And it's beautiful. And uh, we have uh, Dr. Humes, Linda Humes. She said, yes. Jingle Ba. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Sunga and George. Hello, Dr. Humes. Hey, Linda. And we got Carol in the house as well. Carol Johnson. Mm. Thank hey, Carol. Carol came out to my show. I was in Harlem uh, last Saturday, uh, Sunga. I did my little thing, a little comedy thing over at Comedy in Harlem. And oh, Carol okay. was there for her birthday as well. Mm. And uh, we had a beautiful, it was, a, it was a great show. It was in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, I was there. she says hello to you as well. All right, and you have, I back you to you. You see that, Ricky J. Hey, Ricky, Ricky Jason. Was, this brother was a protege of uh, Dick Gregory, mm -hmm. and I did, yeah, I did a thing with him. And he's mm -hmm. out in Jasper, Texas. And you remember right. you know, back in '98, they had that incident where they had this brother that was dragged behind a pickup oh, truck. Yeah. I remember that. You remember that he yes, did a documentary on that. Wow. He did, uh, yeah. Uh, he'll, he'll you know, type it in and write it up. And uh, you know, with Dick Gregory was there, Martin Luther King the Third, Jesse yeah. Jackson, uh, Maxine Waters, all the mm -hmm. activists. And, and Ricky is a beautiful. If you, he sounds, you know, uh, like Smokey Robinson. He told me that, right? Uh -huh. And I said. Maybe this dude fell, you know, and you know, hit his head too, because uh, <laughs> <Smokey. laughs> you know, I was you didn't see that. <laughs> no, I, was, I told him, <laughs> but because I said, "Yo, man, it's Smokey, come on, B." <laughs> but yeah. then I, I played this. I'm like, "Oh, snap!" He sounds just like Smokey, yeah. and he's an activist. He's wow. in a lot of different fights and struggles, and Enough he's respect. really he's really good. M much respect, no doubt. Respect. So that's Ricky, and he's uh, helping me to uh, to do some things as well. Bless. And this uh, Linda says hello, thumbs up. Right. Hi, Linda. Uh, Ricky, Ricky and Carol. Hey, Carol. Thank you, baby. Yeah, yeah they're all coming out. We got six hundred and eleven people in the house so far from nice. you, nice. here, Tonga. Oh, nice. worldwide. My uh, creative consultant, he's from the UK. Oh. Uh, yeah, he's from, we got all, oh. all, all, all out, throughout, throughout the diaspora. You and uh, I have a brother and, uh, you know, 11 hour difference. This is how I went to offer a promotional channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, we see you. I give you a little props on that, a little credit yes. there. Yes, uh, here it is, uh, Ricky says, uh, uh, the bird, the life and tragic death of James Bird Jr., Jr., Featuring Dix Gregory. It's free to watch on YouTube. Nice. And he, nice. hey, where's a money up. mom? Hey, good nice. evening, brother. Money, what's up, man? Uh, this is my partner here, Money Mom. All the right. Mom. You said yes. love, Money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. He goes to the DJ. He, he changes names like a lot of people change underwear. All he, right. Yeah, today he's moving. Money. He keeps it moving, no doubt. A rolling Stone gather no more. Huh? A Rolling Stone brothers no more. <laughs> yes, sir. No doubt. Good to see you, Marv. That's what's up, brother. And um, yeah, so Brother Sunga, it's yes, a pleasure brother. and a blessing to have you on the show. My as pleasure. I was saying up front, oh, most definitely. My pleasure. And uh, give my people, man, give uh, an audience a uh, history of what and who Sunga the Valley is, is, is all about. All right, Song of the Valley, born in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, born 1957 in a hospital. And I grew up in an alley, that's a really small, tiny lane. And around me was music. My father had his radiogram and he used to play it loud. We had a drum 
called Leon Hill Drummers, right on top of my head on the hill, because I'm from the valley. Then we had a steel band like about 25 feet from my house, and they were like city boys, you know, no money, you know, homies. Then right next to them, to my left, there was another big orchestra. So they called Steel Orchestra. So I would get pound by this music. My father loved jazz. I had the African drums on the hill. And the two steel band orchestras that was in my area, that like all that music, you know, and it was, I was just soaking it all up, you know. So then I got to the age, you know, after you turn seven, you have a vision. And then when you turn the next seven, you're 14. So by the first seven, I knew I liked music and I was crazy about it. They used to call me Madman because okay. I used to create instruments in my hand. Now I see they're doing it as a big competition. I used to yeah. play guitar in the, you know, invisible instruments. And, you know, finally I was able to go out and then I would go out into the community and meet these brothers, you know, and um, I met Winston McDonald. They call him Waggy. And he said, he get dressed every day, you know, and he goes somewhere. I said, Wags, where you be going, man? He said, I'm a drummer. I play in a band. I said, Wag, I want to do that. He said, you? I was about nine, you know, about nine. Okay. He said, he said um, you? I said, yeah. So he said, go down Henry Street. Most trainees will know where Henry Street is. And there was a music shop down there, the only one. And I would get a B5, pair of B5 drumsticks, a practice pad and come back to him. He started teaching rudiments, you know, power diddles. Drummers would know this. Mama, daddy, power diddles, you know. So I would do that. And then I, he had me go to his studio, drum studio, set up the drums, practice. They would come, the band would come at night, boom. Then on the weekends, I would tote the equipment, right? They call us roadies and understudy with him. So that was going in one vein, which was more Calypso music, then Soka came, right? Mm. And so now that's not the real passion. Because the real passion is those drums I was hearing on top of that hill. They got mm. into me more than the trap drums. And I gravitated to that. And then I joined this organization around 72 called the National Joint Action Committee. And this was um, the government for the people, by the people. And you know, where I went to school, one block up was Brother Carmichael, which you now know Kwame Touré. So he had us going early and observing what's going on in the island. So in 1970, there was this big revolution where the people, that's the students of the university, rose up and marched through the streets and demanded that everything European leave the island. And we want to have our own. So they marched, and that strand from Canada in Toronto, there were some students that had an uprising. Most of them were Trinidadian. So the Trinidadian students at UWE at that time, 1970, they took that opportunity, rose up, and they marched from the south to the north. So the time they got to the north where I live, there was thousands and thousands of people, and they would stop in front of the banks, and they were demanded to go. They want Texaco to leave. They want Barclay Bank to leave. The Bank, Bank of Nova Scotia to leave. And they were going to the churches and paint the statues black. We wanted a black image. We wanted black. So we have oil. We have all these things. So that made a turn. And then the organization got big. And they started recruiting. So I recruited into the organization. And it was very positive. Very, very positive. And there was a brother there named Sundai. And Sundai would say, yeah, man, I'm going to fix a drum. I'll say, you fixing drum. I went with him. I learned how to fix the drum. I learned how to put it on the skin. Then he would take me to what we call feasts. That's what we call Shango Baptist, what we call Orisha. And we would go to the feasts and different feasts. We would play at different feasts. And um, all that, living with a father who worked in the prison, mm -hmm. living with a stepmother that went to church eight days a week. Eight days. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> determination and you know with NJAC I would have to take pamphlets on Sundays that's newspapers and deliver it to people in the community you know so I would have to okay. knock on doors and be yeah hey, can I help you yes yeah, so I would NJAC and then they go to my father Franco boy your son is black power what 
and he would get in my tail, but I would I would move it around, you know. And then right. um, my stepmother came to America, and I was what maybe sixteen, and she came back with two albums. I didn't ask her to bring that album. One of okay. them was the Last Poets. Wow. Right. Okay. Yeah. And the other one was Superfly. Wow. So okay. Superfly was recorded by who? Curtis Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield. Right? Yeah. Who used a percussionist? That was his main instrument. That percussionist there. So okay. here I'm doing this now coming in, and then what did um what did Abby Odun and them use? The conga drum with conga. a cow. So we we starting to get this feeling in Trinidad. So the drums started getting good. And just when I was at the peak down there, because I was good, they took me and brought me to New York City. I cried like a baby. Why? I'm just getting it. I'm now ready to move forward. I'm turning 18. So what am I going to do, right? Come to New York. You know, I can't play no drum. Where go find drum? 1974. Yeah, yeah, you got bands, you know, Queens. I was in Queens. A lot of bands, soul music, R&B music, gospel music. So, you know, in high school, this brother said to me, yo, you know, they call me Tony Francis. Yo, Tony, this guy getting free lessons. So I said, free lessons? Or what? He said, African drum. So, of course, I jump on that. And his name is Russell Robinson. Okay. So he, he's a well-put-together brother, right? So he have all his credentials. He got his group. He just rolling through life. And he got it going on. So I hooked up with him. And then he would, his teacher was Pablo Landrum, Richie Landrum. Now, Richie Landrum orchestrated a lot of music in New York City. He played with Nina Simone. He played with all the jazz. You look on any album, Richie Landrum from Cuba. I mean, if I could say this word, bad Mickey Ficky, you know? And so he trained all these drummers. So Russell was under him, which was under La Rock Bay. So what I'm getting is Caribbean drumming with an African-American tone. So matter of fact, when they asked me to play a calypso, I play the rhythm. They tell me that's not calypso. That's when I realized what United States is all about. I come from the home of calypso. But what do you, what do you mean when you say that? As well, far as like uh, the style of drumming or? Well, anything come to America, it gets changed into gets, what America say it is. It gets watered so, down, in other words. I won't say watered down. It just gets changed. For example, okay. Okay. example, right? That is the feeling of Calypso. Mm -hmm. Then boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. That is the first feeling of Calypso, which is the rhythm called Shango. Because all the music we listen to come out from the drum. So the Shango rhythm is what they sing Calypso on. So you can sing okay. any Calypso if you know the Shango beat, right? You'll stay in key and you'll, you'll be nice. So now, when Harry Belafonte took Calypso and he sang it, he, he it, it created, it, it got slower because he was more you know, his, his his dialect was more, you know, understandable to the people of America. When we right. sing, they don't know what we say. Man, I tell you, she bad. She mad and she going on. I tell you, she going on. They yeah. say, what? what? They say, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what are you saying? But when Harry Belafonte, Deo, Deo. Then I like corn, me water. So the tempo comes down. So okay. anybody who listened to Harry and never heard Trini, they would say that is Calypso. So they didn't know. Okay. So what happened to it? It got slowed down. So when I come playing on my drum, when they ask me to play a Calypso, because I just joined the group, I'm fresh out of Trini like one year, right? I got all that Trini energy in me. And they say, Play a calypso for us. That's like my audition. But if I could play the calypso, then I could join the group, right? So I start to play. They said, no, no, no. That's not calypso. So that's when I realized I have to reassemble myself. But they didn't ask me to come to America. 
right. I came to America. So now I had to get with them. So I readjusted myself. I played the Calypso. They wanted, and you know what I call it? What's the that? Ari Belafonte style. So we have two Calypso. <laughs> you know, since you said that uh, you also hooked up with the last poets. I didn't know that. No, now, I didn't I hook up with them. I got uh -huh. the album yeah, the when album. I was young. Album. Right, and right. that influenced me to really keep playing the drum because I realized America have drumming, you know? Right. Because yeah. the last poets, they have the, uh, what style of uh, drums did they have as a backer? And tell, the, yeah. uh, tell the audience who the last poets were. Well, the last poets was, they call them the first rap group in America. Right. And they would, they would speak on the revolution. They would mm. speak thoroughly to the revolution, to the change of mentality and for you to, they open your eyes to things that you wouldn't really think about they made the mac man look really good they got into the historic f essence so the whole world could understand where they was coming from so coming when you from. heard them it wasn't guitars and bass and kick drums it was the natural sound of music so and their voices were powerful so very they, powerful their rhymes they stuck with you you know and we, we were able to, re, you know, repeat a lot of them, you know. But I didn't get with the group. But what happened was working with Yaffa Cultural Arts Incorporated, Linda, Dr. Linda Humes, she's good friend with Abio Dun Oye Wole. And he's okay. always around us. And then their percussionist, which is my brethren, you know, Baba Don. And okay. he, he and me go way, 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 way back. So it's it's one love, you know, and one, one aim. Love. Yeah, but what I was telling you about when I got here and I had to figure it out, you know, okay, and, and adjust myself to the style of New York City. And with that, studying under Russell, which was under Pablo, when I got into Manhattan, I linked up with Kimati Dinizulu, right? His father was Nana Dinizulu and Ames of Mozawe. And that put me into the, the realms of people contacting me to do stuff, started doing classes. When you do classes, you gotta learn because a Brazilian class, you can't be you can't be jiving. You gotta play the Brazilian rhythms. So over the years, and I decided I'm gonna stop working. I'ma stop working for the man. I'ma work for God. So I said, okay, boom. Everybody thought I was crazy. Because I didn't have no savings. I didn't plan this. It just was that time. So as I was started doing that, my brother, Baba, you know, he's a deceased now. You know, you know, he by year, his name Jimmy Cruz. And I hooked up with him and he gave me a job to go play in a school, actually work in the school for five days a week, junior high school twenty two at Lower East Side. So I was doing that job. And, um, you know, I'm an open person. And they asked me if I want to come to the after school program and help the dancer. He needs a drummer. So I said, fine. So I went there and I was very lucky because that brother there, he danced with Baba for years. He was one of Baba's lead dancers, you know, and uh, Fred Taylor. And Fred Taylor said to me after a couple of times, he said, you know, Olatunji is looking for drummers. So I said, well, I know Olatunji's name. I didn't know him too good, but I know the name. Because Trinidad, you can't be a Trini and drumming and culture and don't know Baba Ola Tunji. So I was like, yeah, that's big time, right? So I went to audition. It was an audition because the minute that man saw me, he loved Trinidad. So he was just glad to have me. And I sing and I drum. He sing, he drum. So it was like it was like a marriage. And that was like um, 1977 going into 78. And um, from there, you know, I just kept working with him. And that got me to meet all these great people that you tell them about me. And even greater, but we'll talk about that later. And um, I don't say everything because they told me that. Don't say everything. Don't say keep everything. Some, but I want to uh, keep <laughs> some. That's the man there with you, you're talking about. Man, um, that's probably uh -huh. That's a great brother, man. He, he came here in 1950. On a Rotary scholarship, there was a um, uh, a white man in Atlanta, Georgia. He put up um, a scholarship of all West Africa competition, and Baba and his cousin, Professor Aki Wawo, they won. So they came okay. here from Nigeria. 
And okay. Baba went to Morehouse, Professor went to Harvard. And after Baba left Morehouse, he went to a graduating school at NYU. And from that, he did his first album recorded in 1958. But anything you see written on Baba's album was written mm -hmm. by Professor Akiwawa. He did all the illustrations. But he, like me, liked to stay calm. But Baba, you know, so he, they, they were good. But then Professor went back to Nigeria and taught at the, um, at the university, you know. And he, lay fair. he taught at the university there. But Baba stayed here. He didn't go back because that album sold over 10 million copies. 1959, Drums mm. of Fashion. And that album swept the land. Didn't just swept this land, swept every land. Every land. African, Africans in captivity were spread all over this land. And they forgot some of their songs. They, they, but they remembered the melodies, they would hum them. Because, you know, they took away their drums, they took away their culture, they took away their names, they took away everything from these people. But they would hum it, they would hum. But when Baba dropped the album, Trinidad, Grenada, Tobago, Guyana started singing those songs. Because we were already playing the music, we were already right. playing the drums. And we're singing things like, Aki Bobo, Ola Boyle, and that's not the words. But that's how we interpret it by hearing it on the album. And okay. next man in Canada will say, Achi Bombo, Ola Bombole, you see? And next man in, in, in Guyana, you know, so it went different. Everywhere you went, you hear different. So by me coming here, it's like God said, you got to go and get the right lyrics. Yes. And give, and give back to these people because what is NJAC? I'm always NJAC. Government for the people, by the people. So I got to understand who I am. You understand? So here it's called the the uh, Black Panthers, right? That's the same dropping thing. a lot of science. You're dropping a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom. And as yeah. I was saying up front, this yes, is uh, not only is it's going to be entertaining, it's educational as well. And there I want to go. give a couple of shout outs. Uh, you know, we have our, our supporters. We got uh, Linda Humes replying to in hey, Burn. Linda, we got, uh, Lisa, Lisa. Uh, Marie. A Ooh, good evening, I, love and blessings, she love says. Love to you back. And also our uh, Pancho, uh, that's our Puerto Rican bad boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And on, uh, it's his birthday. Happy uh, birthday, Pancho. Puerto is Rican that Pancho bad boy. Pancho who who's a playwriter? <laughs> Uh, he might be. He's a coach, though. I know he, he could tell. He, he made some Rasta fire. Uh, what was that? Shrimp? Pancho. What the hell was that thing? Rasta pasta? Rasta pasta. You know what that is, right? Uh, yeah, I know what that is, man. I had that first time in L.A. on Venice Beach. Yo. <laughs> he, yeah, okay. And he could burn. He was I talking about you know, the last poets. He had all three of the last poets. album. He brought man. out the fact that uh, Jose, you remember yes, Hope for the Felipe? From yes, a lot sir. of people don't know that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, but uh, you dropping it. You laying it down. Yeah, and uh, Ricky man. Jason is always so he said powerful people. Yes. And uh that's what's up. Hey, Ricky. No doubt about that. Yeah, man, you're doing good works, brother. And uh Probably you know, you. like I was putting your mentors up, uh Baba Tunde, uh the master. That that yes. is a bad that is a bad outfit right there. Mm. And um man I wanna, with your permission, uh to uh to play, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a short video of his, uh, like, like an educational tutorial thing, if that's okay with you. That's fine with me, man. All right, that's, we'll be right back in me. a minute. And that will be fine with Baba too.
you know what? Um, and I mean, you were there, you know, so it was, you spent 25 years. Uh, yeah. Incredible, man. And uh, I, I want to, you know, before we get into that, you know, that whole thing, if you, you break it down, you know, I, I, the drums and the, the kind of drums he's playing and, and what was, you know, everybody, you know, because each one, as, as, as we know, have their own sound. Yes. And, uh, and rhythmically, he's going from, he has to know you know, from the, the keys and everybody is in, in, in sync. It's like singing yeah. the harmonies and stuff like that. It's just mm -hmm. it's a, on a whole nother level, but it's it's, it's in there. It's the same, but in that yeah. pocket. Yes. Straight, straight in, in that pocket. pocket. Yeah, you said you it know, right. Before before I go further, I wanted to uh, say Bonnie Chambers. I uh, welcome Bonnie, the real Bonnie Chambers. She was welcome, a Bonnie. Back, and she's got she's in Chi Town. She's in Chicago. All right, welcome her, Bonnie. And she has her own show, a progressive show, her own podcast. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, and she's uh, nice. keeps us abreast, and uh, she's in tune with the uh, Michael Collier. We do the thing every year in okay. Queens called uh, the Platform. Mm. Uh, yeah, and uh, okay. it's an old school uh, thing, and so uh, so we'll, we'll see what's jumping over. She came in. She's trying to get Michael Collier, the comedian, to come and do that. Okay, As Marie, she enjoyed it. She was Thank saying that's sir. a great fire. Much Straight love, by. much love, much love. And, and Ricky Jason was saying how deep that is. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to, uh, uh, with those drums, what were those <laughs> drums? Well, one of those drums they call Asiko, and that's a Nigerian mama drum. Another one of those drums is a Jimbe drum, which was from the Empire of Mali. And one of those drums, was so Ghanaian, Ghanaian, you know? So in those three sounds, and then I'm playing the djembe, mm -hmm. but I'm playing, the djembe has three parts. It has bass, it has tenor, and it has alto. So I'm playing like a alto, and Baba is playing like a tenor djembe. And then Sikiru Adepoju, he's on the other side playing what Bob, what we learned from Papa Lati Kamara, he came here in 59, recorded an album with Baba Olatunji. He was the first djembe player to come here and establish a dance company, okay, of djembe and dance from his, 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 his place. He was with the Jolie Ballet that came in the 60s, and he, he stayed, you know, and Baba, Baba Olatunji got Dag Hamasho to sign the paper to make Papa stay because he didn't want to go back. He wanted to, the djembe to become something of the world. And at that time, Sekutore was running the country. And he said, anybody who leave here and don't come back is no longer from here. So he's considered dead. You don't come back. You don't come, you go out, you stay out. You stay out. So Papa Laji got caught in that. And, but mm. he stayed here and he really worked that djembe drum. And you hear an album called More Drums of Passion. That's where he came. And his drum just made Baba's thing more phenomenal because the dances that the, his drum was, you know, because it's a Muslim drum. So it's a goat skin. We used to play a lot of cowhide and, mm. you know, we were on our drums, you know, but he came with his drum with the goat skin. And I mm -hmm. mean, the, the sound of the drum, you know, just, just electrified. You know, it's a high pitched drum. So it, it it works good with the ego, you know? But mm -hmm. he, he was a master, Papa Laji Kamara, you know? So that that djembe, you know, he really, and then another brother came from Senegal named Mocham, and his son is Akon, the rap singer, R&B, who is doing a lot of good works in Africa right now. I clap him because he's doing a lot of good work. Yes. So, so you know, Mocham, he went to the Caribbean, but he has a wild style. Okay. You know, Papa Laji, he's from that school. And they said that Laji had his Guinea Ballet Company when he was six years old. Mm. See? Okay. Yeah, when he came here, you know. That's he, deep. He did six, six, yes. Six, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six? One, or two, three, four, five, six. Sixty or six? 
six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Understand? Oh, because, you know, back then in those days, man, you know, they, they would they would play. After Ramadan, it was a big thing with the Jimbe, you know? And it's a, you have to be conditioned. So yeah. now it's a lot of Jimbe's. So Papa Laji, he put a lot of kids out there and they had children. Jimbe's played all over now. They even have commercial Jimbe's made out of formaldehyde. And that can't work because we need the wood because it's not just the Jimbe, it's the voice of the ancestor. Okay. So if you're playing, if I call you on a on a, a phone with two clim tin, two pan with a with a string, and I call you with a cup, you're not gonna your phone's not gonna ring. But if I take my if I take my rotary phone and I dial your number in the 60s or the 70s, your phone would ring. So if, if I try to talk with with my ancestor with a plastic, to me that's degrading our okay. culture is rich the tree oh, yeah. the spirit of the tree the spirit of the animal the goat the spirit of the human makes the trinity so you could communicate you say Tankara! it sounds like that but when you use another type of drum it won't sound like that so it's like me talking to you and i say yeah george how you doing man how you feeling you know me you know my voice you might be blind, God forbid. You say, who's that, Sangha? Because you know my voice. I know your voice. But if I come with some other kind of voice, you're going to say, who's that? Somebody got to tell you, yo, that's Sangha. You know? You say, nah, Sangha don't sound like that. You don't sound like that. No, right. no. So when we play the drum, we're not playing a drum. we playing the voice of the ancestor. They call it okay. a drum. But how many things going to be a drum, man? You could put pork in a drum. You could put fish in a drum. You could put rice in a drum. You know, back home in Trinidad, we had drums. They had drums, steel drums. That's oil. They put oil in the, that. Then they turned it into a steel pan. The only instrument invented in the 20th century, which is now running things in the world. When they hear steel pan, they fall down. But that started with the drum. It started with the drum, right? And then they took away the drum, 1692, right? Mm -hmm. So now we use the bamboo. Boom, boom, ba -dip, boom, ba -dip, boom. In Ghana, they use the bamboo too. They call it pum pum in Ghana. And we use the bamboo. We call it tambu bamboo. But then the bamboo will burst. Can't use that. So we discovered right, the right. pan. And now the pan is all over the world, just like the jimbe. But it's the spirit that's have us all together. It's a spirit that brought you to me. Yes, it's a spirit that got this show on. It's a spirit yes. that made all these people who tuned in. God bless everybody. A spirit that brought everybody. When Baba opened his mouth and he sang, that's the spirit of Baba. There's a spirit of you. We all have a spirit, and we we shouldn't wait till we pass to to celebrate that spirit. We should celebrate that spirit all the time, all the yes. time, yes. all the time. You know. So, like I said, you know, it's. The birth of these of these the voices of these ancestors when they come together they make one harmony the congolese drums same thing the voice of the ancestor the yoruba drums the the fanti drums everybody got a drum why it's their telephone it's the way they communicate see then the europeans came and they say no drumming and then what did that do that created tap dance okay. what that did that created Hambo. That created this. Well, they do it when the, the Hambo, when they slap their thighs and the... Uh, yes, yes. Right? And yes, that part of the uh, Hambo. Yes. And finger clicking and, 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 and clap, hand clapping. And they the just couldn't tell for us. The rhythm yeah, is dead. Yeah. They just couldn't deny the rhythm. We going, huh? It's yeah. going to show itself as uh, one form Listen, or another. Man. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cut you off, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm the drum. You're the drum. We're the drum. Because if you don't hit the drum and you have it in your apartment, there'll be no sound out of that. You hit that drum, then it's a drum. So I'm the drum. So they can take the drum, right? What they, they had a song back in the day. We don't need no music. We mm. got conga. You see? 
You mm. know, when the lights go out, what are you gonna do, man? Your computer, your DJ is there. It's not red, there. Red ain't alert, cool, cool red alert is there. He ready, but ain't no juice. Puff Daddy waiting to come out the wing. Ain't no juice. You know, Snoop Doggy Dog is over there. Ain't no juice. What you think gonna happen? Man, a cappella and the drum will be the music. Whether it be a steel drum, a kick drum, a jimbe drum, a siko drum, a bongo drum, a conga drum, it will be the original music because there were no lights back then. So we got mm. to bring it back to the roots, taking off my boots. And you see these children today? I did a gig with Linda last Saturday. Okay. Little babies. They all came to around my drum like bees, man. You should see these children. They're not even two. But they came to the drum. They love the drum. I want to show a picture real quick. Yeah, man. On, on that note, or what you were talking about, how, you know, everyone pretty much gravitates toward the, that rhythm, toward that beat, yes. toward the yeah. drum. And I've seen this. Uh, this caught my attention. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good and, day. Uh, that was a good day? That was a good day because we we actually making people who grew up with parents who used to call us niggas. We're making them learn something that's going to humble them and change the outlook of their parents of the who we of really it. are. Because when they come to me, they come into Song of the Valley to learn drum. They're not coming to me to say nigga this, nigga that. They're not saying look at his face. No. They're coming because the drum called them. The ancestors right. called them, right? Now, when you put a flyer out for a workshop, you're not saying whites only. You're not saying blacks only. You say drum in class. If drum all the class. whites show up, that's they're interested. When no blacks show up, you don't know what's going on. Yeah, because I, I see all white people around you. I'm like, Yeah, okay. because they know the value of us. Yeah, Their parents, their parents went to Africa, and their parents divided they and conquered. Yeah. And we, they yeah, so what they feel now is that we got to get with these people because these people know how to live. When we play these drums, it, it operates our brain, the two sides of our brain. It'll help us to live longer. When we eat the food that these people eat, it's really good for us. When we eat Rastaman, Rastaman say Aital. They want Aital. They go to Jamaica more than us. They go to Africa more than us. They yeah. buy more African clothes than us because yeah, they travel. And when they taste that, they come back home. They are going straight to Brooklyn. Hey man, I'm ready. I had a ruddy in Trinidad. I have to get a ruddy. Where do they have ruddies? Say, hey, yeah. man, just go down by alley. Take the yeah. train, Austin Avenue. Ooh, and when they taste it, oh, they become automatic man. Automatic, they really yeah. love our stuff. And we need to learn how to love our stuff. We have lost the love of our stuff, bro. And this yeah, is where the real. drum is bringing us back. Boom. Bringing us back. I'm going to show this little clip on that note for that Man. picture. Just, uh, just you know, just a, uh, a little taste of it. Um, yeah. You know, for that. And you elaborate after. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Give props and credit to credit is due. So it looked like they were you did a hell of a job, man, because they were all all in rhythm. They were all in the pocket there, it sounded like. And uh yes. 
you know, so how often uh, did that, that group or class, do you still uh, are with, with them, uh, you know, instruct well, them? I go out, people call me, that's an organization from New Jersey. Okay. Mar Marty Fanny, and they, um, they're two, two sisters that went to Africa. They learned the music and everything, and they, they want their people to learn it. So they give these little workshop up in Adams, um, Massachusetts. That's where they have a lookout there. It's very, um, it's like the highest point. People go there and hike up, and they have mm -hmm. tea and stuff on top this high mountain. And um, they have this, you know, so they will call me maybe once a year, twice a year, three times a year. And then you have other organizations and they will bring it to their people, you know, and everyone who wants to participate. But what made them all those people there playing sync is they were actually playing rhythmic patterns. And some would choose pattern one. There's like six patterns, rhythmic patterns. So I give it to them like that because basically our music is, is charted out. It's charted mm. out by the spirit. You just don't play a rhythm. It has to come from the spirit. So you have like like uh, the 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 six eight rhythm. You have the four four rhythm. You know you can make a rhythm, George, and you can make this rhythm, and the drummers could play this rhythm. And then another guy might hear he like it. He start playing it. He down in Chicago. A guy might go back to South Africa, and that rhythm become famous. Look at that rhythm for Jerusalem. Tuk tuk chak tuk tuk chak chaka tuk tuk chak tuk tuk. That comes from the drum. But he put that on the turntable, and then, you know, Jerusalem, uh, it, the, the biggest song in the COVID time. You know that song I'm talking about? The whole world was doing the dances. That, that rhythm caught everybody. And you know you what see? she, like your sister here says, she goes, yes, King, we have Congo. And then she mm. said, that's Mr. Marie. She brings that out. And she goes, yes, bring it back. I agree, King, our history. So she's with it. Yes. She's very yes. aggressive, too. And uh, yes. what you were yes. talking about, too, when you pointed out, when they took away our, um, you know, the drums, where they denied us that, and then we started, uh, as you said, it's tap dance. Huh? Yeah. Like Gregory Hines, Sammy Davis Jr. And when yes. I watch that movie, Taps, and it's, that's just nothing. That's the drums there. That's I mean, the drum, baby. Yeah, and that little Savion Glover. Yes. Uh, he's, he's, he's rhythm. Rhythm. Of course. Of course. You know, you know and it is a lot. Then there's sand, sand dancing. Yeah, yeah, soft, yeah. Soft, soft tap. Pepsi Patel, you know. The, the, the yeah, dirt man. on the on the on the stage. Uh like Tell when they like you said, it's, yeah, it's just so much to it. Yeah, and, and Dougie uh, Fresh with the Dougie Fresh with the B box. The B box. He bring the drum out of your mouth, you know, and and it, it's it's it, that's something that we you know like in Cuba they would say conga conga and they would yank the chains with this rhythm at night when slave masters sleep conga mm -hmm. conga and they would yank like conga conga we lay we lay conga and that broke the chains bro and if you go to Cuba. That is like a national chant. And Desi Arnaz, he brought it over here when, when Lucille Ball brought him. And you will hear, Babalu, aye, Babalu, Conga, Conga, wele, wele. Because when the slaves freed themselves, they ran up in the hills. And that was their, and Conga, their, their, their music come out of the Congo. That's why they call it the Conga drum. So when they hear it, man, there's a movie called Salsa the Movie. And um, what's his name narrated that, that movie? Um, uh, Geraldo Rivera. And he was saying, most people think that salsa came from this. And he showed a clip, like you saw in little clips here. He said, no, no, let me show you where salsa came from. He showed the okay. depths of the Congo. Wow. The depths of the Congo. It's called, anybody could go get that movie. Everybody should have that movie. It's called Salsa the Movie. Man, find your all stars. You're not going to get a better movie than that. At Yankee Stadium. They tore the stadium up. Uh, yeah. yeah, they said they're not going to have no more shows at the stadium after that. Them Puerto Ricans, they went crazy up in there. Boy, Mongo Santa Maria versus Ray Barreto. Competition. Uh, Two Congueros going at it. 
You know them people felt bad. Them Puerto Rican people, they went mad. Yeah. Dominican. And I know but Pancho. I know a whole Pancho lot of Puerto Ricans up in here. I know Pancho, the bad, the Puerto Rican bad boy was in the house. Aye. <laughs> but Pancho, you don't know what I'm talking about. That's real know. what I'm saying. I got in 74. <laughs> that movie was in the movies. I went okay. from Queens to Queens to the Bronx. I found my way to get to that movie. I got okay. there to say, I got there to say we sold out. I said, oh man, that's why I said, go in, man. You from Queens? Go in. I watched the movie standing up. Loved it. Wow. Mm. Yeah. And man. what's the name of it again? It's called Salsa the Movie. Salsa the got Movie. Johnny Pacheco as a Fania All Stars. And they have Manuel de Bango. And it's, they have this is all, all the You got Willie Colon, Johnny Colon, those guys in there. You have oh, no. Mongo Santa Maria, Ray Barreto. You have mm -hmm. a, you know, Hector Lavo. You have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of horn. I mean, Fania. If you go know Fania history, Carlos yeah, Santana, yeah. his brother, Jorge Santana. He played guitar in the group. That's where Carlos got a lot of his stuff from. But you don't hear about Jorge. Jorge. Not at all. That's, Not at all. Very uh, rarely. That's, yeah. But that's his manager. That's his older brother. Jorge, when you hear Jorge play, you you know you know where Santana got them with, with Where Carlos got it from, yeah. Yeah, Jorge, mm. Jorge. No, we call him George, but it's Jorge. You Jorge too. Jorge si. Mason. If you si. go to Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. That's a coincidence, my, my right? My stepfather is Puerto Rican. Jose Manuel Serrano. Don't get no more Puerto Rican than that. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Hey, huh? Do not lie, do not lie. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> man. Yeah. You want to yes, play some sports? Uh, you, you got your your drums. Man, they, you got, want to... they got me in a tight squeeze, but I can figure something out. You know, you know a little something, I, something. I, I can figure something out. Let me let me get something. Hold on. You know, let me see that go. So uh, we, you know. Huh. We coming up on an hour, and I think uh, we covered a lot. We, you'll come back and then do a follow. And then I'll tell you what you want to do it like this. Uh, how how we can end it all because we had it. This was you know beautiful. This was a great interview, and uh, we, we could close it out with something, and then you'll come back, and then right. uh, it sounds good. Yeah, let me see. Okay. I, they got me in a tight squeeze here. Mm -hmm. But we're going to figure it out. This is the Shakeway, right? And I mm -hmm. want everybody to know how to spell this instrument. S-E-K-E-R-E. Sakara. We say Shakeway because what I was saying earlier, when you come to the United States, stuff change. You got to work with it. So I grew up saying Shakeway, but the word is S-E-K-E-R-E. Sakare from the people of Nigeria. The Osun people of Osobo. So... It's a gold drum. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Okay. yeah. Real, real quick. We got Eddie. We got Eddie. Eddie in on the check-in. Hey, Eddie P. Eddie P. This for you, boy. Hey. Hey. I know how my name Eddie P. Down in Florida. I know how my name Eddie P. Down in Florida. He go fishing. He drinking. He having a good time. Eddie P on the line. Eddie P, what you say, man? Are you feeling fine? Eddie P used to be in the Bronx. No, Eddie P down in that place. Anyway, we we gonna take something nice. I'm glad Eddie P showed up. That's, hey, that's what we call that's freestyle. Kind of take it up on that's the spot. Jimbe freestyle. That's yeah. freestyle. Yeah, no freestyle. doubt. So huh? we have some. We got some that go like this. Oh, dunde, oh, dunde.
to you. Bye bye. It's that time of year. Like we are back home in Africa. Where we come together, we give thanks for plenty to wear, plenty to eat, and plenty to drink. And it's that time of the year we say, Happy New Year! Ajadun, Ajadun, Ajadun. Ajadun, Ajadun, Ajadun. Ajadun, Ajadun, Ajadun. Get ready, here we go! Ah, oh, yeah. That's a God drum. Thank you, everybody. No respect. This is the God drum. No respect. Yeah, no this, doubt. This God is the God. She decorated it. In my yard, blue and white ocean. No respect. No respect. I, I love you, man. I give thanks to my brother, you know. um, They call him Lamont. And yeah, Lamont anything all. computer wise, I go Lamont. Uh, Linda, Dr. Humes, he goes, Lamont, two more things. You know, so he's like <laughs> the Mrs. Quack, you know what I mean? I know. He, help, he helps us out and he up in the house. He quiet though, cause he's from Harlem. You know, brothers from Harlem, they be quiet. But they, watch they, out. They, 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 they taking out the situation, they laying in the cut. They laying you in know. the cut. Oh Waiting yeah, but he's the man. Room. I want to bring him up because without him, yo, I'll be like, uh, duh, uh, duh. So I, I'm on the outer net. Those who know me, they know that. But I gotta oh, come yeah. on the internet. No doubt. I gotta come on. I gotta come on. Lamont Hall, give him, give him a, a shout out. You can bring him on. That's what's up. Lamont, you bring your face, too. man. I think he shaved this morning. There he is, y'all. Big him up. up. <laughs> Big him up. He's a man. And call no him. Doubt. He's on the service. Call him. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. I'm Eddie glad we're here for everybody. Come yeah, on I tonight. thank you. I, I, uh, Eddie's laughing. He says, son, go to the valley. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my ass off. Uh, it's a great show, man. I, I appreciate you. And uh, for everything, I got, I got, was telling everybody up front, it was going to be educational as it was. And it was going to be, as uh, Lisa Marie pointed out, informative. Thank and uh, yeah, it, it, it was you. everything. Thank it, you. Entertaining. It was just, uh, and the, the hour just goes by so fast. Yeah, it? man, because, you know, we flowing like the river. No we doubt. like the river, you know. The mm. river rolls fast. You know, it hit that ocean and turns into salt water. Real yes. fast. Real fast. And then Eddie, Eddie can fish. And he can go. Well, get, <laughs> I'm gonna catch 40 fish yesterday. Four zero fish, boy, Lord. Yeah, right, I mean that's, like, that's just a regular day for him. Oh yeah. ah, man, he's the man. Yeah, he kind of he called me up. He said, "Yo, some some get in touch with George, man. Yo, I said, I'm talking to George. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Doctor Hume. She said, "Beautiful show, great job, my dear brother. Right. Thank you." Yes, uh, uh, Dr. You. Everybody's just shouting you out. And yeah, uh, yeah so to everyone. Oh, most definitely, brother. Yes. And, uh, uh, again, we got to uh, make a date and come back. And uh, yeah, part two, part two. Part two. Part they, can, two. They, they can reach you through uh, Lamont, uh, Dr. Humes, through Yaffa. Anytime. Okay. All Anytime. Right. Tonight is fine. I got my mind made up. I'm going to do it. Anytime, say what? You remember that? <laughs> That's all part of Africa. Them words is the drum. When we speak, that's the drum. You know how Trinidad talk? Judge, what happening, boy? Yeah, man. Georgie, judge, hold up now. Give me two dollars now, Judge. How? Me no, me no have it. How New York talk? Yo, Judge, what up, man? You can let me hold two dollars, man. I ain't got it. You understand? When you meet Chinese it. in New York, ha, ha, I it. Ah, you have to die. I don't have it. Yeah, Chinese baby in the road. Yeah, give me penny, penny. So, you know, we all want, bro. Language That's is it. it. That's the drum. But some of us, we have accents. 
we have accents. We're black with a Scottish accent. Yeah, we're man. Black with a British accent. We're black I, with a, a, a Portuguese accent. You know what I mean? Ask me for two dollars in Scottish. Oh, hello, hello. Ask me, ask me for two dollars. Yo, George, can I have two dollars, please? I don't have it. <laughs> I went to the Dominican Republic. And girls, yeah, like, yo, they no, want like, uh, can no, I? Uh, <laughs> I said, I, I don't have it. You have a money. <laughs> you, have a, you, have a, you have a money. I'm yeah. like, I ain't got it. I ain't got it. No. I, I usually beg them first. I beg them first. I say, nice watch. Can I have that watch? And yeah, they want to <laughs> run away from me. I say, yo, let me have them shoes. I beg them first. I beg yeah. them first. Yeah. You know, yeah. they got nice stuff. They got nice stuff, man. That's yeah, a fact. Some of them will give it to you. You like this? Yeah. And I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So is it something else? So we got a lot to touch. You know, we got time, brother. You know, life we is got good. Time. Life is good. All right, you brother. Keep doing your good. thing, man. No respect to you, brother. No respect to you. put a I lot of work into preparing this thing. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh it was work, but it was all it was uh you know pleasurable work, you know what I'm saying? Your thoughts are great. Uh, yeah, no doubt, because a lot of stuff I know you from for many years. We know each yeah. other. Yes. But, you know, as much as I know you or know of you to some extent, I didn't mm -hmm. know the depths. You have layers to you. You are, you know, and I, we've only scratched the surface. Oh, I don't, yeah. Yeah. So but what you shared with me and uh, with uh, the, my audience as well, yes. was, uh, yeah, was very valuable. And yes. uh, they got a, a, a great uh, lesson tonight. And, you know, like you were showing those, those, all those uh, people around you in that that class and that educational class. Like yes. you say, it's so unfortunate you didn't say it, but you said it. In, you know, in a, a kind of a, a roundabout way, as far as like how we as Africans, as Black people, have to actually go back to the Caucasians after they go to Africa and learn our history and bring it back to us. We have to learn from them. It's yes. just the same, you yes. know. So. That's what I got from what you were saying. It's like instead of us just going to the to the source, to the roots, like you were saying, when they put the Caucasians out of uh, uh, Trinidad, and that's almost like what Idi Amin did, you know, yeah. in his country. When he yeah. told him, white, right, get out of here. Yeah. You know, all the yeah. white people would go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Remember that? But we, Same thing. Of course. We, we, we put it a little nicely. Dr. Eric Williams, the right honorable, he said, Yankee, go home. Go home. Yes. And get the hell out still. Go home. But, yeah, Love but, you, but, you know. Go. Yeah. But yeah, brother, so uh, thank you for everything. You're welcome, You're welcome yes, John. I appreciate everybody it. on, I want to yeah. say peace and love. I want to say I am that I am. I am light. I am love. I am joy. I am beauty. I am peace. I'm one with Mother Earth. I'm one with the Father in his universe. I'm one with everyone within the reach of my voice. And in this togetherness, I ask that we go home safe. If we're already home, be safe. And then live your life, love your life, and be at peace. One love, vibration. Peace. One. Rastaman oh, say, Rastaman out. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Some go to the valley, everybody. Yes. That was great. I want to thank Sangha. As I said, that was just an extremely educational. Uh, we did an hour and uh, 12 minutes with him, and it went by so fast. And as I said, we only scratched the surface. And uh, big uh, props, big shout out to uh, Lamont Hall for being uh, the engineer on on this uh, segment and, and producer, if you will, with Dr. Linda Humes of uh, Yafo Cultural Arts, Inc., uh, for, for having everybody's back and for doing the thing. And uh, for everybody who checked in, uh, on the check-in, Lisa Marie, Eddie P., uh, Dr. Humes, of course, uh, Puerto Rican bad boy. It goes on. If I miss anybody, 
uh, that I didn't shout out, Ricky Jason, of course, uh, Bonnie, the real Bonnie uh, Chambers. Uh, I appreciate you all and thank you and all the people all around uh, throughout the diaspora. Uh, listen, you guys have a great night. And again, I wanted to thank <laughs> Comedy in Harlem. I laugh when I said, hey, I did a bit. <laughs> the other night and it just caught on caught on like wildfire i know i got some brand new bit you know i talk about like uh, that i haven't made it yet like with my contemporaries like tracy morgan and uh talent and all those cats that are working and, and making a good living and i said my reason being is because i had a habit i had a, a an addiction i <laughs> i sniffed cocaine I smoked crack. I said I even drank crack. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But you know what? It's, it's true. I fucked around and drank crack one night. And uh, what it was, you know, like, you know, you know, old saying you can't judge a book by its cover, my grandmother used to say. And what it was, you know, these girls, like, you know, you're getting high and everything. And you can get some girls that have talent. They can cook. When I say cook, a lot of people don't know what I'm talking about if you don't get high. Cook uh, regular cocaine uh, to crack, you know, to base. It's not even really crack. It's base cocaine. You smoke it or whatever. It's a, it's a quicker high, a little more euphoric. But anyway, the, the thing was that when I said I drank crack, because <laughs> what I did, I got like an eight ball of cocaine, three and a half grams of coke. And I had seen this girl cook it up one time. She cooked it. And she was telling, give me orders. Give me some baking soda, motherfucker. So, you know, you get the baking soda. You get, give me some cold water. 57 degrees. She knew the temperature and everything. And I'm just like a puppet, you know, but I'm doing all this stuff. And she cooked this thing up and the cocaine, the, the rock came back. It was, you know, I, I'm like going to say, but when you get high, at that point, it was beautiful. You know, it was like a good, you know, this is like, man, okay. Mm. So I said, shit, if she can do it, she was twisted, you know, as far as I was going. So I'm like, if she can do it, crankhead, if she can, I can do this shit. I got three and a half grams. That shit was like $150. I fucked it all up. So did I get rid of it? I drank it. I had a crack smoothie. You heard? I had a crack cocaine. Smooth. I drank it. So nobody could believe what I was. The crowd was, they were dumbfounded. They were like, the fuck is he talking about? Did he just say, some dude said that was sitting there, he said, yo, man, did you just say you drank crack? Did you just say you drank crack? I, and I couldn't, you know, I was stuck because I did this brand new bit. I did it one time before and it worked and killed. <laughs> it was a completely different audience. <laughs> Everybody was with another girl. She goes, what did you did he say? Did you just say you drank crack? <laughs> and every comic that came behind me, every time they got a little stuck or whatever, they would refer back to that line about drinking crack. But anyway, I thought that was funny. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I drank it. I drank the fuck out of that. One hundred and fifty dollar crack smoothie. Mm, mm, mm. But um, you live and you learn. My grandmother used to say, I want to thank uh, you guys for tuning in with me. And uh, it was a journey, man. Like Sunka says, man, Sunka of the Valley says he took us on a journey, the, the journey of the drums and uh, through his uh, his student, the master, uh, Baba Tunde Ola Tunje. And uh, he learned well because he is a master drummer himself, the Trinidadian. Uh, Sangha of the Valley. We definitely have him back if you would look like to come back and we go for uh, part two, round two on this one. It was beautiful. I enjoyed it. Spiritual, uplifting, good vibes all the way around across the board. And God bless you all. Have a good night. Peace. <laughs>